I'm Jenny Broadbelt. I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of Texas at Austin. And my group develops advanced mass spectrometry methodologies and technology to solve biological problems. We're interested in developing mass spectrometers, in particular ion trap mass spectrometers, uh, to enhance your capabilities. And the way, the direction we've taken that is by integration of lasers with the mass spectrometer, in particular for this technique of photodissociation. This is where you use photons to energize ions to cause them to fragment. And so we've implemented that on a number of ion trap platforms using a variety of different lasers. Even uh, photon sources like light emitting diodes or LEDs can be used for this photodissociation method. And recently we started using ultraviolet photodissociation. With UV photodissociation, you're adding a high energy photon or several high energy photons. That elevates ions into excited electronic states and it opens up a whole rich array of fragmentation pathways not accessible by collisional activation methods. I think the technique of UV photodissociation has almost unlimited applications. It can be used for any kind of biological molecule. It can be used for large molecules, small molecules, any uh, methodology or, or problem where you would want more fragmentation information, uh, that would be a you know, good fit for UV photodissociation. The, the LUMOS itself has high resolution, high accuracy capabilities. Now that's critical when we're analyzing, for example, intact proteins. Because with UV photodissociation, you generate such rich fragmentation patterns that you really need high resolution, high accuracy, so that you can sequence the protein and pinpoint the sites and modifications. LUMOS has a set of linear ion traps on the back end. That's a really convenient location for doing photodissociation. So we can put an optical window on the back end and then bring the laser in and do photodissociation right in the linear ion traps. And there's an unlimited range of biological applications. Uh, one of the newest ones that we've been exploring is the use of UV photodissociation in the arena of structural biology. This means intact proteins, uh, in particular, intact proteins that are still folded or native-like in the, the mass spectrometer. And then we can use photodissociation as a way to examine how the proteins are bound to ligands or other proteins, how they fragment when it, uh, exposed to the UV photodissociation, and this gives us an uh, insight into the actual structure, the three-dimensional structure of these proteins uh, in the mass spectrometer. I think the motivating force for my group and me in particular is really development of new technologies and methodologies. We can apply these methods to any problems and we can get excited about any type of biological problem, but really it's the advanced analytical methods that in many cases allow biological research to move into new directions.